All right, here we are again. We're in chapter six now um, with math with Zord. We're starting systems of equations and inequalities. We have five sections going on in this chapter. Uh, the first one, we're going to introduce you to what a system of an equation ought is, what systems are. And then the next three, we're going to look at three different ways to solve systems of equations. And then the fifth one, we're going to take a look at systems of inequalities. Okay? Um, so <clears throat> what, where systems come from is where sometimes we have equations that have more than one unknown, which is also called a variable. Okay, that's something we, we've known that, where we can have two different variables in the same equation. Okay? There we are. Um, so something like 2x plus 3y equals 8. We have two equations. We notice we cannot find uh, a specific value for x and y, because every time I try to solve for one, the other gets in the way. So let's take a look here at this equation on the left, and we're going to solve this for x. So to solve it for x, I need to get rid of my y. So I'll have 2x equals negative 3y plus 8. Divide by 2. And x is equal to negative 3 halves y plus 4. Again, this is not anything close to an answer that we need. We need a specific value for x. And when all we have is this equation with y's, it doesn't work. So let's try and solve it for y. And we can see that the same thing will happen. I'll subtract 2x and get 3y equals negative 2x plus 8. Divide by 3. And y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 8 thirds. Okay? And so again, we see that that doesn't help us at all. We still don't have a value for y. So what we need to do is whenever we have two equations, we need to have two, <coughs> excuse me, when we have two unknowns, we need to have two equations. That's what we see here. When we have two unknowns, we need two equations. Okay? A solution to these systems is an x and a y value, and it needs to make both equations true. Okay? Not just one or the other. The x and y value have to make both equations true. Okay? Each solution that we find is going to be in one of three forms. There's three different ways that we can get solutions. We can have one single solution, which is x equals a number, like 3, and y equals a number, like 5. We could have no solutions, which is the empty set, 0 with the line through it. Or we can have infinite solutions, which is all real numbers. The two line R. Okay? And we'll talk about when we know we have no solutions and infinite solutions um, and one solution with the different methods of solving systems because each method is going to look a little different. Okay? So uh, that'll come later. First, uh, let's talk a little bit about solutions to the systems here. I want to know if x equals 2 and y equals negative 2 is a solution to this system. The system is y equals negative x and y equals 2x plus 6. So if it's supposed to be a solution, that means it makes both equations true. So the way I can figure that out is to plug it in. If I plug in my y value, that's negative 2, is equal to the negative of my x value, which is 2, which it creates negative 2 equals negative 2 which is true. But it has to make both our equations true. So we plug it into the second equation. Negative 2 equals 2 times 2 plus 6. I just plugged in my negative 2 for y and my positive 2 for x. So negative 2 equals 4 plus 6. Negative 2 is equal to 10, which of course is false. Therefore, remember the little triangle for therefore, x equals 2, y equals negative 2, 
is not a solution. Okay? <coughs> so we can see that uh, those are not solutions. Flip it over to the back. Okay? I told you there are three different ways to solve systems, and we'll get to those in the next three sections, but those three ways to solve are by graphing, by a method called substitution, where you guessed it, you get to substitute, substitution. And the last one is called elimination. In elimination, you get to eliminate things. Okay, So those are the three methods we're going to be looking at. Okay, Each of those methods will get you the same answer. However, uh, you can decide which to use based on how the equations are written. And we'll talk about uh, which way or which one I should use based on how they're written when we get to each of them. Okay. Oh, there goes my phone. I don't know if you heard it in the background or not, but it just went off. So before we can learn how to solve them, we need to learn how to write them. So I have a couple examples here of word problems uh, that we're going to write these systems for. In these word problems, they're going to have two things that we don't know, so that means we need to have two equations. Okay. So Monica and Michael both want to buy a scooter. Monica has already saved $25 and plans to save $5 per week until she can afford the scooter. Michael has $16 and plans to save $8 per week. Write the systems of equations that would be used to solve this scenario. The first thing I need to do is what's called define my variable. So I need to find my two variables or my two unknowns. One of those things, we'll call the first one T, is the total amount saved. I don't know how much either of them have saved. Okay. The other thing I don't know is the number of weeks that they're going to be saving. All we're told is that they're saving a certain amount per week. It doesn't say how many weeks it's going to take. Okay. So those are my two variables. Now I need to set up my two equations. So I can look first at Monica's equation. She saved $25 and plans to save $5 per week. So that's telling us that the total amount is equal to $25 saved already plus $5 for every week. Okay. And if we look at Michael's equation, we see that the total he has saved is $16 plus $8 every week. And there are the two equations. Okay. We would then have to use either substitution, elimination, or graphing to find the total amount that they saved and how many weeks it would take them to do it. Um, but right now we just want to practice on writing those equations. Okay. So let's take a look at one more and we're going to be talking about some uh, hot air balloon balloons. <clears throat> so at a hot air balloon liftoff, Jeff noticed that the Snoopy balloon is 10 meters above the ground and is rising 15 meters per minute. Shannon noted that the Charlie Brown balloon is 150 meters above the ground and dropping at 20 meters per minute. Write the system of equations used to represent this scenario. So again, let's list my unknowns. Let's define my variable. Um, the Snoopy balloon is, ooh, sorry, we want to define the variable. We don't want to talk about Snoopy yet. So the two variables that I need to know are one, D is the distance that the balloon is from the ground. And the other thing is how many minutes it's traveling. Okay. So I have two variables, two unknowns. That means I need two equations. So first we'll look at Snoopy. Snoopy is 10 meters above the ground and 15 meters per minute. So its total distance is 10 meters and it's rising, so it's going to be adding... 15 meters per minute. Now, the Charlie Brown 
balloon, its total distance above the ground starts at 150 meters and is dropping. So when it's dropping, we're going to be taking away the distance because it's getting closer to the ground. So dropping at 20 meters per minute. Okay? So these are the two equations that we would use to solve. Okay? So I hope that gives us a good introduction to uh, solving systems. We'll be practicing uh, writing equations from the word problems. And then in sections 2, 3, and 4, we're going to learn how to solve these. So I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Bye.